Okay, so we are on our last unit of circles, or our last lesson of the circle unit. We are looking at having a test on Wednesday. Okay, so we'll wrap it up today. Review tomorrow, have a test on Wednesday. If you, again, if you have not begun studying at this point in time, I can't not imagine what on earth you're waiting for. There is a lot of information that is all fair game on this, uh, this two-dimensional, properties of two-dimensional shapes unit. I would be studying kind of like a madman at this point in time, trying to make sure I'm prepared for whatever they may decide to throw our direction. Okay, but before we get finished and review tomorrow, we do have a few extra things to take a look at. Area and circumference of circles, which is something that you have been doing for several years now. But we have to look at a couple of new things, uh, one of them being sectors, probably something that we don't know as yet. And we've heard the word segment before, but we haven't ever looked at segments of circles, and that's something entirely different. So let's take a look at it. Okay, first off, review probably from somewhere around sixth grade. The area formula for a circle. Okay. No great mystery here. You've probably been dealing with it for a while now. It is provided for you on your uh, tax and your star formula charts. Okay, so I will not ask you to memorize it. Although I think at this point in time, that's one of those that probably ought to be etched into your skull by now. The area of a circle is calculated by multiplying pi times the radius squared. That's right. Okay, the, the typical value of pi as I've got up there on the screen, the rounded off value is 3.14. I think everybody knows that that is not the exact value. Uh, if you push the pi button on your calculator, you get something to the effect of 3.14158265, and it goes on infinitely forever. Okay, but for most things, okay, what's, it'll be good enough in here, it'll be good enough on your, your end of year test to simply use the value 3.14. Okay, so it's really not a big deal, okay, uh, using the area formula is nothing really more than plugging in a single value, that one value being the radius, okay. So I would think at this point in time, if somebody flopped down 10 circles in front of us and gave us the area formula and told us to find the area of all 10 circles, that we probably ought to be able to get all 10 of them correct. It's really not a big deal. Uh, the only strategy I'm even going to have you do would be just like any other formula we've talked about this year. If it's a formula that's on the formula chart, you need to copy it down onto your piece of paper before you begin plugging into it. So here you go, area of a circle, area equals pi times r squared. Write it down on your paper. We know that the value of pi is rounded off at 3.14, which has been provided for you on the formula chart in the past. Even if they do not provide it for you on the formula chart this year, you still have your calculator with you. You can still press the pi button and find out how big the value is. But pi is 3.14, and the radius in this case is 5. No big deal. Okay, just plugging in numbers. And 5 squared obviously is 25. You would go to your calculator to figure out what 25 times 3.14 is. Okay. And you don't have to give me infinite decimal points or anything like that, but I would like at least one, probably two decimal points. This one doesn't have two decimal points because it didn't need them. It was a zero past the five. It was 78.50. Okay. <clears throat> and keep in mind that area is a two-dimensional measurement. It has length. It has width. So anytime you calculate an area, you're going to end up with whatever the units of the problem were. In this case, they were yards then those units are going to be squared. And that just means that the units are squared. It doesn't mean the value is squared or anything. So 78.5 doesn't get squared. It is 78.5 square yards, a three foot by three foot area, 78 and a half of those. Okay, so no big deal there. The only thing I'm going to point out to you at this point is uh, keep in mind for those of you that are thinking college at some point in time, you're going to be looking at SATs and ACTs and stuff like that. You are not going to have a calculator at your disposal okay, when you take those tests, which means you are not going to use 3.14. Okay, It would be my bet that the answers are going to be in terms of pi. So when you go pi times radius squared, you're going to be going pi times 5 squared. You actually will not simplify that pi. Your answer will be 25 pi. 
okay? This and that say exactly the same thing, okay? One of them's just in decimal form. The other one's in terms of pi. This would be your answer, 25 pi. If you're taking your ACT or SAT, that's what you're going to be looking for, 25 pi. On your tax or end of course this year, 78.5 be the decimal point, okay? So just keep that in mind. All those formulas work that way. Okay, now one slight alteration that we need to look at for this area formula, okay, and this is something that you've probably never been asked to do before. You've been asked to find the area of complete circles for years now. Okay, what we're looking at today is the possibility that your circle may not be complete. Okay, so if the goal is to find only a portion of the area of a circle, and that guy has a name, it's called a sector. If the goal is to only find a portion of the area of the circle, we're going to have to make a slight adjustment to the way the formula is set up. Okay, and this actually takes longer to explain than it does to, to do it. Okay, so just kind of suffer through the explanation of it, and then we'll look at some examples, and you'll see that it's not nearly as bad as it sounds. Okay, but here's a diagram of a sector. And typically, you know, high school students come to think of it you know, as a sector, uh, the definition of a sector or the picture of a sector is like a, a slice of pizza or a slice of pie or something like that, okay? It is simply part of a circle in the sense that, um, you know, you've got radii that connect to the center point, and then some piece of the circle is being focused on or removed or however you want to think about it, okay? But that guy is a sector. Now, if we're dealing with the area of a sector, it's really not all that much rocket science. You still do have a circle. It's just no longer an entire circle. It's just a portion of a circle or a fraction of a circle is a better way to think of it still. Okay? But the entire circle's area is still found by pi r squared. Okay? That's, not, that's not new to us. We know this. So if we want to know the entire circle, we would just go pi r squared. The issue now is, okay, we're not looking at an entire circle like pi r squared would say. We're only looking at a fraction of the circle. So how do we make the formula just look at the fraction of the circle that we want it to? Okay, the answer to the question of what fraction of the circle are we looking at comes from this, okay? If you think about what a sector is, okay? A sector is a three-sided figure of some kind, okay? It's kind of hard to describe it other than just to call it a sector. On two sides, it is bounded by radii. On its third side, it is bounded by an arc, a portion of the circumference of the circle. Okay, but in between those radii, there is an angle measurement inside of there, okay? We're going to need to know that angle measurement, okay? So we're referring to the angle at this point as theta, which is a term that we've heard before, back from our days of talking about trigonometry, okay? So Katoa, we had theta. Theta is our unknown angle, okay? But that angle that's in there is directly responsible for telling us how much of the circle the sector is actually covering. Okay, it was suggested a moment ago that how could we tell what fraction it, uh, we're looking at? By dividing. That's not too terribly far away from the truth. There are 360 degrees in a circle, in an entire circle. Okay. A sector only covers a portion of it. How big is that portion? Well, I don't know. It depends upon what theta is doing inside of there. However big theta is, is going to talk to us about how much of the circle is being covered. And more specifically, we can figure that out by looking at this ratio, theta over 360 degrees. Okay, 360 degrees is the entire circle. Theta will tell us how much of the entire circle is being looked at. Since there are 360 degrees in a circle, then we are looking at theta over 360 degrees of the circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that formula that we had, pi r squared, and we are going to adjust it 
by this ratio by simply multiplying this ratio into the formula. Theta over 360 is a fraction of the circle, which is found by pi r squared. We multiply those two values together, it's going to tell you how much of the circle the sector is covering, or the more specifically, the area of that sector. Now, this formula will not be provided for you on any formula chart whatsoever. Okay, they will give you the pi r squared. It'll be up to you to remember that if you're only looking for a sector of a circle rather than the entire circle, that you will need to apply that theta over 360 fraction so that the formula knows how much of the circle to look at. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at a, a simple example here. All right. Well, figuring out the area is really not that big of a deal. If you can remember the formula, then the calculation is really not a big deal. Okay. Since it's a sector, we will use the area formula for a circle, but we will ap apply the ratio, theta over 360, to tell us how much of the circle. Well, all we have to do is plug in the necessary information, and then more than likely, you know, for end of course and tax and all that kind of stuff, we'll just go to our calculator and find out how big the number is. Okay, so in this case, what's theta? Yeah, 100. It's the measurement in between the two radii that are bounding the sector. And pi is, of course, 3.14, so we'll plug that in. And radius is going to be, in this case, 6. Okay, so no big deal. I mean, it's just it's just a bunch of numbers at this point. Now, again, if we were talking about SAT or ACT, we probably wouldn't be going to decimal points at this point. We would just be simplifying the fractions, leaving things in terms of pi. But for the calculator, let's just, I mean, we're going in. We've got 100 in the numerator. We've got 3.14 in the numerator. We've got 36 in the numerator. We're going to multiply all those numbers together, and we're going to divide by 360 degrees. Whatever number it comes out being, that's just the number it comes out being. In this case, we get something in the ballpark of 31.65. Now keep in mind, again, area is some is two-dimensional, okay? So if they had provided us with some measurement, some type of units, feet, miles, centimeters, pink flamingos, whatever it is they provide us with, that would be squared. That's what the U squared is there for, units squared, okay? So whatever the unit of measurement was, chances are your answer is going to reflect that. 31.65 feet, inches, centimeters, millimeters squared. Okay, so this isn't much uh, different and not much more difficult than working with the area of a circle formula, just one extra piece of information included in it. So not a big deal. All right, well, you're going to find the exact same chain of logic and reasoning when we talk about circumference. I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about circumference because, again, this is more of a sixth or seventh grade topic that has, has been hit with you guys more than once. Okay, Circumference is the distance around the circle. Now, we said in the beginning we were going to talk about arcs in more than one type of language. Okay, we, We've been measuring them in degrees. But they're just part of a circumference, okay? So we are going to be looking at arcs here in a moment the same way we're looking at circumference. But circumference is, again, a formula that's provided for you on the formula chart. Uh, I think most of you learned it as 2 pi r. Some of you may have learned it as pi d, you know, pi times the diameter, which is the same thing as 2 radii, okay? So we, either way you learned it, it's the same formula. And, of course, pi is either going to be provided for you on the formula chart, or, again, you'll be able to go to your calculator, press the pi button, and it'll tell you 3.14. It'll give you the big decimal point. Okay, so it's not a real big deal. So, I mean, copy this down if you insist, but it's really pretty straightforward at this point. Find the circumference of the following circle. Okay. Um, Oh, my formula actually says area equals 2 pi r, and that is incorrect. It should be saying circumference equals 2 pi r. Okay. And all we have to do is plug in the 3.14 for pi that we know. The radius, we come to the problem, we, we find it out. It's 5. We just plug it right in. 
Okay, and you get a decimal point back out of your calculator from that, 31.4, and in this case, it's yards. Okay. Now, keep in mind circumference, which is messed up on my page all the way down the page. Okay, circumference is a linear measurement, it's just a line. Okay, it's a line that happens to bend around in a circle, but it's still just a line. So it's not a second dimensional measurement like area is. That's how come this one doesn't say yards squared. It's just yards to the first, first dimensional measurement. Uh huh. Uh, the stars is just the way my, my computer does a time sign. So no big deal there. And keep in mind also, if you are talking about uh, ACT or SAT, then your answer here would have been 10 pi, 2 times 5, which would be 10. And the answer choices would most likely be left in terms of pi. So, okay, now from there, we can look at, uh, we are going to have, just like we had fractions of the area of a circle, which we called a sector, now we're going to be looking at fractions of the circumference of a circle, which is something we've talked about already this unit, and those are arcs. So if the goal is only to find a portion of the circumference of the circle, which is called an arc, then we're going to make the exact same following uh, adjustments that we made for the area. Well, same chain of logic here. You can probably abbreviate your notes considerably. The circumference of a circle is still found by multiplying 2 times pi times r, or pi times the diameter. Okay. So the exact same question is going to arise. Well, if we're not looking for the entire circumference, then we're only looking for a fraction of it, and the question is still, what fraction of it are we actually looking for? <clears throat> All right, well, once again, okay, in order to figure out what's going on with a fraction of the circumference, that's fine. We're just going to use the circumference formula, and we're going to use the same ratio that we use to figure out the fraction of the area, theta over 360. Wherever the endpoints of this arc are, there are radii that reach out and grab a hold of those endpoints. There's theta in between them. Okay, so we're going to take the circumference formula, 2 pi r, and we're going to multiply it by theta over 360. That should tell the formula how much of the circle that we end up covering. And this is where that other measurement that I've kind of been talking to you about for the last week or so, that there's other ways to measure an arc rather than saying how many degrees of the circle it covers. This answer is going to tell us what length of the circle it covers because circumference is a length. It's going to be a straight number rather than a degree measurement. So we'll look at a couple of examples or at least one example here in a moment. Okay, let's look at this same circle that we looked at a moment ago. We figured out the area of the sector a moment ago. Now let's figure out the uh, arc length. Really not a big deal. It's just not a difficult situation. Okay, we've got a formula, and again, they're not going to provide us with this formula. They'll provide us with the circumference for the entire circle. It'll be up to us to include the fraction if we're only looking at a fraction of the circumference. Okay. So once again, we're just going to plug in what we know. Theta is the measurement in between the two radii, which is 100. Radius, halfway across the circle, 6. Just plug it in, okay? Take it to your calculator, deal with the numbers. Okay. And in this case, we end up with a number that's somewhere in the vicinity of 10.55. And again, you'll get some numbers that vary depending on if you round off. Like, for example, if you start off with this, this uh, fraction okay, and go 100 divided by 360, you're probably going to end up with a, a decimal point that's got, it's an irrational decimal point. It keeps going on. And then if you use that number to multiply by 2 and to multiply by 3.14, depending on when you round off, our, our answers are going to get a little further apart. Okay, now here's the thing that is different from everything else. 
okay? We have a new structure, something you've probably never seen before, and it's called a segment, okay? We have talked about segments in the sense that we've talked about line segments, but we've never seen any such a thing in a circle. And here's what it is. A segment is, uh, or segment of a circle is what you get if you connect the end points of two radii with a cord and then look at the area that's between the cord and the arc of the circle. All right, now if you want to see, see what a diagram of a segment looks like, it looks like this. Now, a segment can be a little bit difficult to calculate depending on what information is given to you. And to make matters even worse, there's not exactly a true formula to go with it. Okay, But what we do is we, we think of a segment the same way we think of a composite shape. Does anybody know what a composite shape is? You know what a composite number is? You know what a prime number is? Okay, so prime numbers are numbers that are built only out of themselves, right? Composite numbers are numbers that are not prime, meaning they are built out of other numbers, like 6. 6 is a composite number because it is built out of 2 times 3. Okay? Composite shapes are the same way. By themselves, they are not any special kind of a shape, but they are built out of other shapes. So if you ever see things like, you know, a rectangle that's got a triangle jammed onto the end of it, well, we understand the rectangle and we understand the triangle, but when you put them together, it becomes a composite shape. Okay? Or if you have a big square that's got a rectangle missing out of the, uh, the center of it. We don't have a name for that, but we understand the square, we understand the rectangle, so we can describe it by adding or subtracting one shape from another shape. Well, we've got the same type of situation here. You can see the sector, okay, bounded by the two radii and the arc of the circle, okay? We understand the sector. You can see the triangle that is now missing from the sector, and we understand the triangle. So it's, in short language, it's it's turning into a subtraction problem. We have a sector that is missing a triangle, and when you take the triangle away from the sector, you're left with this little sliver-looking guy on the outside, which is called a segment. So you can see that a triangle has been formed by the new line segment and the radii. If we can figure out the area of the sector and then subtract away that area of the triangle, then the area that's left over is the area of the segment. Okay. Now we're running a little short on time, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to the example here so we can see how this works. Okay. Now just because there's a bunch of junk in the picture doesn't mean it's a difficult calculation. Okay. For something like a segment, a lot of information is required in order to do these calculations. So here we, we just have a situation where there's a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's see if we can break this complicated diagram down into smaller, more manageable pieces. We said the area of a segment, which is what we have here, is nothing more than a sector that is missing a triangle. So that's the way we're going to treat it. We're going to first look at the sector of the triangle. Okay. Well, looking at the formula here for the sector, all we need to know is theta. And we need to know the radius. Well, what do you think about theta in this case? Okay, I hear a bunch of numbers floating around. I hear 300 and I hear 60. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, if this is the sector in here, in between these two radii, okay, then how much is this angle measurement inside of there? Okay, it's 60 degrees. You've got this 300 up here, and that's great. It's not a distractor or anything. It's needed because the entire circle measures 360 degrees. That means this area inside of the triangle at the, at the center point of the, tri of the circle is the missing 60 degrees, and the radius is 10 straight out of the problem. Okay, so we plug in the numbers. We'll take it to the calculator. We'll figure out what it all turns out being, and in this case, it ends up being 52.33. Okay, so that's not a difficult calculation, finding the area of the sector. 
Now, there's another calculation that needs to be done because from this sector, we need to take away a triangle. Okay, well, I didn't put it on there, but this formula is also from the tax formula chart. Okay, one half times base times height. Okay. The only thing you need to know in order to figure out the area of a triangle is the base and the height. And you can always find the base and a height in a triangle because they are going to be perpendicular to each other. So have a look at this triangle. What are the base and the height? Yeah, the eight. Okay. And I hear 12 and also hear sixes. Is it possible to figure out the area of this little triangle on the left, then the area of the little triangle on the right, and then combine them? Sure, you can do that. But it probably makes a little bit more sense to allow it to simply be one larger triangle with a larger base, and the larger base would be 12 units coming across the bottom there, and 8 units. So plugging into that formula, we got the 12, we've got the 8. Again, you'd probably just take it to your calculator and you'd figure out that it's 48. Now that's all well and good. The purpose of figuring out the sector individually and the triangle individually was because we decided that a segment was an area of a sector missing an area of a triangle and that's what we need to do. So to find the area we just subtract the area of the triangle away from the area of the sector. So we got 52.33 take away 48 and whatever's left over is the area of that little segment sitting in that that uh, spot on the bottom of the circle. In this case, 4.33. And again, a segment is an area. So if it had any units in the original problem, which I don't think it did, it would simply be those units squared. Okay, that's it. This is probably easily the most complicated math okay, that we've seen for this unit. Okay, but the, again, the formulas aren't hard. Uh, the math isn't hard, it's just something else we're going to have to get memorized. I will provide you with the formulas that are going to show up on the formula chart. The rest of it will be up to you to get memorized. Okay. So that is it. Uh, review day is tomorrow. Test day is Wednesday, so please get yourself ready for that.